The sun hangs high above the concrete, and steel landscape layered in glass. Among these structures we meet a woman, whose name you will not know. You will know no one's name, for this is not a story to know people's names, but about the lessons they imbue. Her fingers dance across the keyboard, crafting a fiery ode to unfettered speech. Censorship, she types in her naivety, is democracy's slow strangulation. In a chorus of a million voices, silencing one is like... Her thought dangles, unfinished, snatched away by the city's breath of digital life. Neon billboards flicker with the day's events. <laughs> A violent incident in the city center, spurred by words spoken too freely, too hatefully. Her eyes, reflecting the electric glow, capture the march of protesters, moving like a river of purpose toward the epicenter of the city's latest uproar to express their concerns about others who express themselves even further. And there in the center stood a man on the stage, a bear of a man with a mind razor sharp, his age belied by an undiminished vigor in his eyes, in his look. He stood colossus in the old auditorium, words booming, painting a picture of a world held in check. In a society pruned and shaped like a bonsai tree, speech too gets its branches clipped for neatness and form. Controlled words for a controlled society, he proclaimed, his eyes sweeping over the gathered, finding the woman. Their eyes show recognition, a spark of challenge. Her hand, unbidden, rises. Her voice slices through the murmurs like a scalpel. Isn't that just a gilded cage of censorship? The man's smile, predatory, spreads across his face. Ah, a debate. Come, young lady, test your ideals against reality. What unfolds is a verbal waltz, a spectacle of words and wit. The woman, fiery and unyielding, a champion of democracy's raw voice, the man, a maestro of controlled rhetoric, a shepherd guiding his flock. Here is a snippet of what unfolded. By caging our words, you blind us to our true needs. Her voice a beacon in the fog of conformity. But what of the painted words of hate, the slurs that birth violence? He counters, gesturing dramatically to the news flickering on a nearby screen. The crowd murmurs, a sea stirred by his words. Freedom of speech, in its purest form, must prevail. It's not just about the unbridled, but the collective voice, reasoned and clear. We simply filter the chaos, the violence. Critique yes, incite no. And who decides what is incite? Are we now entrusting our voices to a committee of the morally upright? The people decide a true democracy in action. Yet our city's foundations crumble under your equivocations. Freedom, unchained, is our legacy. Would our forebearers condone speech that undermines the very fabric of our society? Yes. She replies, a tinge of reluctance in her voice. Even if it whispers treason. Knuckle, but... She hesitated, her words teetering on the edge of an ideological precipice. But what? Why should any reasonable leader tolerate treasonous whispers among their flock? His voice steeped in a blend of sarcasm and gravitas. It's so we know who the dissenters are. Her voice a mix of innocence and defiance. And then what? Allow them to weave their web of lies? Lies that steer us from truth? in the guise of chaotic freedom? If it means upholding freedom of speech, then yes. Truth, in the end, will emerge victorious, she declared, her belief unwavering. And who says we'll be alive to witness this triumph? The weight of his words sinking in. She was taken aback, pondering the depth of that statement. Who indeed, she wondered. Why does it matter if we're alive to see it? She asked sincerely, her curiosity piqued. Because if we stand by while lies proliferate, even if they escalate to violence, we're just waiting for the inevitable. We think it's expressive now, but what about our grandchildren? 
they might bear the brunt of our inaction. But who are you to decide? Who am I? I am a parent, as are many of us. We've lived, we've learned, and we strive to guide our children toward a better world. This freedom you cherish, it's like a world governed by children, naive and blind to the dangers of unfiltered speech. His voice rose, his words painting a vivid, almost dystopian picture. You might mean well, but the path you advocate could lead to chaos. Everyone believes their truth is the ultimate truth, I say. Let all voices be heard. You're acting as if the truth does not want to be spread, as if parents have no wisdom to give to their kids, as if the system holds wisdom. The culture has it, and whatever the culture deems to be said and not said is final. And this culture says no to speech spoken too freely, to hatefully. His arms spread wide, embracing the crowd's roaring approval. We vote what we want said and not said. We mold what we want to think about and what our children need to know. Not politicians, not foreigners, not anybody who doesn't live among us. And those who are always standing against our culture, leave or be left. She found herself swallowed by the wave of fervor, her voice drowned out. The tango concluded with the audience, spellbound, as they witnessed a clash of ideals, a dance of democracy in the digital age, challenged their views. In the symphony of a million voices, whose melody do we follow? Lutter, sitting on a bench, she watched the crowd, likening them to ants under a magnifying glass, aimlessly scurrying, ignorant of the looming burn. Beside her, a man sat, his gaze fixed on the crowd, his demeanor unimpressed. Is this the cost of freedom? She remarked, seeking to engage him. The man, still watching the crowd, replied nonchalantly. Isn't everything about control? Well, yes. But what does that have to do? You see this? He gestured towards the crowd. As control. But isn't urging people to say whatever they please also a form of control? Her face was a canvas of frustration, her emotions painting a vivid picture against the backdrop of her perceived intellectual struggle. The man beside her, a stranger with an air of detached wisdom, glanced at her briefly, inviting her to elaborate. Yes, obviously. She shot out, her face beginning to redden. I don't get why you're raising your voice. You started this chat. Sorry, sorry. I was just embarrassed in the crowd. Trying to mask the flush of red in her cheeks. I noticed. A smirk dancing on his lips. She inhaled deeply, bracing herself for more learning. Please, I want to understand your perspective. I'll try to keep my frenzy in check. All right then. Well... This goes beyond speech, but we will only apply it to speech for now. Everything boils down to control, manipulation. Telling people what they can or can't do, it's all about steering their thoughts and actions. But the paradox is, unrestricted guidance eventually becomes restrictive, and vice versa. Could you give an example? She asked, leaning in. A society with rules focuses itself toward a specific goal. A society without them, seemingly chaotic, still reaches an end goal. Each morphs into the other with time, with new generations, or external influences. And how does this relate to what happened today? It's everything. It's about the clash between restriction and freedom. You argued for an unrestricted world because it fosters dialogue, self-expression, and might prevent violence. I see change as the essence of free speech. Life, nature, God, allows us in life to say and even do whatever we want, a gift no man-made system can replicate, nor would it want to. So, so, if we implement what I believe, we're close to mirroring nature's foundation. No, because of change. Freedom means the ability to change, even if that change is to restrict freedom. 
you don't want a hierarchy. But those who rise to the top in an open, lawless society will dictate what's permissible. Their will, more potent than the rest, leads to obedience, often willingly. This restricts speech to consolidate power. So, if I prevent that, I'd be, be the, the one, one in, power. in power, they said simultaneously, and end up dictating what people can say to remain at the top restricting their choice to want control, their personal freedom. There will always be someone at the top, controlling others, whether they intend to or not, imposing what they deem as correct. Are we really discussing freedom of speech, or is it something else? No, yet here we stand, you and I, the orator and the critic, entangled in this vital act of dissent. It is the essence of our discourse, the soul of our contention, to voice our grievances on matters that pulse at the heart of existence. The man on the bench mused, a sardonic edge to his voice. Ah, so discussion, that's the engine of society, the framework that lets voices be heard. Her tone a mix of hope and skepticism. But what's discussed matters. Those truly bereft of power, they dwell on the inconsequential, lost in a delusion that their words hold sway. They fail to grasp their own insignificance in the grand narrative, mere pawns, mesmerized by the mirage of false hopes. They discuss topics that are already set in stone, like how many genders there are, or if anal sex is just as healthy as vaginal sex. It's idle talk. It shouldn't be open for discussion, free discussion, should be thriving, even encouraged, on subjects meaningful to the people. And who appoints the gatekeepers of this thoughtful discourse? In the echelons of power, not every sovereign wields a tyrant's scepter. History whispers tales of kings who, with benevolence, sculpted realms towards prosperity. Decay at the summit merely unveils a corruption that pervades the entire edifice. A true leader, in essence, is but a reflection of their people's noblest aspirations. He explained, his words painting a picture of an almost utopian monarchy. But even good leaders differ. Change is inevitable. Surprisingly little, for righteousness echoes unchanging through the ages. When both ruler and ruled align with transcendent immutable laws coming from the Lord, a firm foundation is set. Persistent critique of leadership is not the hallmark of freedom. True liberty manifests when ruler and people resonate in harmony. Yet as the sands of time remind us, such harmony is but a fleeting melody. A shepherd, amidst kin and flock, forsakes idle chatter. He utters only words of encouragement and truth. In the absence of such words, he embraces silence becoming a silent witness to the unfolding of the world around him. He said, a hint of fatalism in his voice. But that's the truth. Once it is allowed, wit will be saved. Like the man on stage said, who guarantees truth wins in our lifetime? Free speech isn't a magic wand. Lies can just as easily masquerade as truth. Truth must fight its way up imposing itself on falsehoods. Otherwise, we're just groping in the dark, catching glimpses of truth, likely not in our time, but in our grandchildren's. But when truth finally shines, it obliterates the lies. It's from a culture that's never faced its own mortality, never died and been reborn, that we get this naive idea that once truth is part of the conversation, it will instantly triumph. It's called hope. Standing up, her mind reeling from the bench philosopher's monologue. As she rose, he reached out, touching her hand with a gentle, almost apologetic gesture. I didn't mean to trample your optimism. Just shedding light on what it really takes for free discourse to be positive. I'll leave you with one last thought, if you don't mind. Fine, are your last words. But please let go of my hand. 
a mix of annoyance and curiosity in her tone. He let go, looking slightly embarrassed. Democracy, tethered to freedom of speech, hinges on our collective emotional and intellectual pulse. It demands communal self-reflection. It's wisdom that keeps democracy from devolving into demagoguery, a king from morphing into a tyrant, a meaningful speaker from a babbling fool. We get tangled in trivialities. Do we really want people to discuss or express their feelings about whether there are multiple genders, whether pedophilia is legit, or if God is evil? From these discussions, only confusion is the result. To wrap up my ramble, democracy's chaos of clashing opinions doesn't directly birth truth, but it lays the groundwork. So keep an eye on the dominant discussions at your dinner table. They're a mirror of your government's psyche and a compass to where society is headed, he concluded. His words echoed the blending of the profound with the mundane. A switch flipped in her mind. An imaginary hand smacked the dangling light bulb inside her skull. The idea illuminated her thoughts. Now I see it. Thank you. She blurted out, bolting away with the speed of a collegiate sprinter. The man was left in her wake, realizing he'd forgotten to ask for her number. She dashed up the steps, stormed into her room, and began furiously typing. True freedom of speech isn't just about spewing words. It's about the mindful stewardship of our expressions. Is the ability to say anything really what we want, what we need? Or is it about letting truth lead? And what is truth? How? Outside, the digital billboards erupted with breaking news, a violent incident downtown, fueled by words meant to restrict and condemn.